Hi, I'm Elvira Boulay from the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. And today I want to share with you a little bit of my practice. So what I'm going to practice today is a piece that I haven't practiced for uh, quite some time. And I actually left it off with a little bit of a problem. I was a little stuck and I just left it off right there. Um, and, and sometimes that's actually really good, you know, if you feel stuck, don't use it as an excuse to take time off from practicing, but just practice something different. I have a lot of concerts coming up and I have a lot of program to play and this is not one of the pieces I am going to perform anytime soon. However, it is super fun to practice and it is the final of the Faschungsschwank aus Wien, the carnival scenes from Vienna by Schumann. And I'm usually very fond of last movements, it's the last movement, because they're usually fast and fun. And, and this one definitely is. So the problem I left off weeks already ago is a fingering problem, which is why I wanted to share this with you today. Because Dimitar and I talked about fingering last week and it's such an interesting subject. And it's pretty rare that I'm stuck on a fingering, it actually doesn't happen very often. But it happened this time, I have two different fingerings and I don't know which one to choose. So that's the problem that I left off. I have no idea what will happen, so let's see. I'm going to play through first my Handle edition. And I have another edition, Peter's edition, in which, it's, uh, which suggests a different fingering. Usually I never buy Peter's, I don't like it very much, especially compared to Henle, but I received a huge bag of scores and this happened to be among them and I checked out the fingering, it's actually pretty good. So I'm going to play first the Henle and then I'm going to play the Peter's and then I'm going to see if I'm magically unstuck already <laughs> or if I have to do something to get unstuck. So I'm just gonna play it through slowly to get uh, the feeling of the piece back. suggests is four two three one four two and the problem with that fingering is that I have to make quite a large stretch from one to four over a black key and that somehow kind of made my hand a little bit tense however later on in the piece it is actually um, the, the theme, this same theme, comes back in a different tonality and the fingering is actually great for that one. And one thing I always like to do in my fingering is consistency. If I have one passage, I like to try to stick to the same fingering. It's not always possible, but especially for memory reasons, I would really like to stick to that fingering. Otherwise, you sometimes have... <laughs> I actually have a piece now that I'm playing in an upcoming concert is a very subtle difference and is one finger difference. So the first in the exposition, I have to play it with a three. In uh, the reprise, I have to play it with a four. And I always mess it up because I always play a four in the exposition and a three in the in the reprise or like, I always do them the in the wrong order. And then I literally just play the wrong thing. So in order to avoid that, I kind of like to stick to the same fingering wherever possible to avoid those kinds of issues. So that's one reason that I would want to go with Henle. Um, but one of the reasons that, because the stretch is large, makes my hand a little bit stiff, that would be one of the reasons I don't want to go with Henle. So like I said, I very rarely have a dilemma, but there's one today. Um, let's take a look at Peter's, because I already forgot what they suggested, but I remember it was pretty good. So the hand at all so I can keep my hand really relaxed which is definitely a advantage of the Peter's fingering and I think right now without having practiced it at all really like the Peter's fingering suggestion because it keeps my hand very small but I do have the feeling that um, I have the risk if you play something really really fast sometimes your fingers can get tied up I think that's a bit risky, so I'll try it maybe a little bit faster to see what will happen. Compared to the handle. Thank you. 
both of them fast and um, I have a slight preference for Henle. I don't know if that's because I started with Henle or that I really like it better. But it's very rare that I have such a dilemma, I'll be honest with you. So what I tell my students, because some of my students do have different additions, especially to compare things like fingering. And from one side I like it and from the other side I don't, because the, the risk is that you stay too long in this phase. So the longer I stay in this phase of not knowing and not choosing a fingering, the longer it takes for me to learn the piece, because you can't start learning it until you take a decision. So I'm going to give myself a deadline and I'm going to give myself maximum three days. And in those three days, I am going to practice this piece every day. And I'm going to try out both fingerings and I'm going to try out both fingerings in different tempi, but especially also fast. Because, you know, you hear a saying very often, slow practice, and I think that is so necessary. It's the things, it's the thing that students need reminding of the most. But there are some things that you have to figure out in fast tempo. And if you have a piece, and if you're trying to decide on a fingering, only slow is not going to help you find your fingering. You need to know how your fingers react in a fast tempo. And like I said, sometimes stretching your fingers in a fast tempo will help you not to get them tied, uh, tied up. So that's a little bit the fear I have with the Peters one, that it's so close together that actually my fingers will get confused in it because it is a very high tempo, which is super fun. Okay, so I actually solved the dilemma, which is nice. I like the handler better, but I need to work harder for it. So I like the handler better because it doesn't risk me getting my fingers tied up. I can keep consistently the same um, fingering throughout the whole piece, but I have to work harder because if I don't work hard enough, I'll catch a wrong note on the way from the G flat to the A, because it's a big distance and I have to cross it with one, one four and I have to cross black keys in order to do it. So I have to work harder. So I have to make sure that I'm very relaxed. But I do like it better. I am going to work a little bit harder, but to go with the fingering that I like that is more comfortable for me. And I think that's what is very, very important if you're stuck. In the end, being stuck is even worse than taking perhaps a little bit of a more, a worse fingering, um, because being stuck means that you, you're not going anywhere. At least, for example, if I go with this fingering and I find out in two weeks that my passage still isn't working, I will switch, I will change to the other fingering because I think that's, that's one sign that your fingering isn't working for you. So if you have the question like, how do I know if a fingering is working for me? If you practice something for two weeks, you see no improvement, your passage is just going wrong all the time, choose a different fingering. But for now, I'm gonna go with the Henle one and um, I'll check in with you and show you how it goes. Maybe I'll upload some, uh, some passages on Instagram and you can see if this is working out for me. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed making this video for you. And um, as always, if you have any questions, please let us know. I also wanted to say thank you, a big thank you to our newest subscribers, also to our older subscribers, of course, and to all the lovely comments we've been getting is very motivating for us. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.